going to talk about social media and the internet and what social media is, uh, why it's necessary, how you can participate in it, and why it's necessary for you to be involved in social media and a little bit of what's going on in the world of social media and then we're going to give you some demonstrations on how to do it yourself. We'll start the uh, talk off with a little bit of introductions, we'll each introduce ourselves. I'm Dino Giacomazzi, I'm a fourth generation dairy farmer in Hanford, California. I'm a Kings County board member. I'm Ray Brock, a dairyman from San Jose County. I became involved in social media just about a year ago. I saw it as a way to uh, quickly and effectively get our voice out to the consumers and uh, for the most part be able to create a conversation with consumers. Uh, my family has, as I said, the dairy in San Jose County. Uh, we milk about 400 cows there and we also have a alfalfa operation in Klamath Falls, Oregon. Uh, Jeff Fowle from Siskiyou County. Uh, I'm the Twittering Cowboy. Uh, somebody just had the idea that I need to get a mouse and a screen on the horn of my saddle and I did that. Uh, I became involved thanks to Ray uh, about six, seven months ago and have been trying to organize a direction to communicate directly to the consumer most effectively. So what is social media? Social media is an umbrella term that defines the various activities that integrate technology, social interaction, and the construction of words, pictures, video, and audio. You might have also heard the term Web 2.0. Web 2.0 defines the difference between an internet that was generally run by content providers who thought that they would use traditional advertising mechanisms through the internet to try to attract eyeballs to their uh, particular website. The difference between Web 1 and Web 2 is uh, media or corporate driven content versus consumer driven content. So we have to participate now in a way that everyone else is participating. So we have to have a presence in places where, in places where people are. We have to be on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube. We have to be in all the locations where the people are. These are, these are some of the most important of these uh, tools. Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, the little globe there, that's Wikipedia. The bird represents Twitter. And then down there below are some uh, websites and tools that are used for blogging or for Blog is short for web log. It's essentially a, a tool that you use for keeping a diary or writing. It's, it's a, um, a way for you to be the publisher and, and put out your own content. Here's an example of how long it took for each of these technologies of communication to reach 50 million users. The iPhone applications hit 1 billion downloads in 9 months. A billion people downloaded applications for the iPhone in 9 months. The iPhone now has over 100,000 applications. And almost all of them, not all of them, the majority of them have to do with social media and ways to communicate instantly. If Facebook was a country, it would be the third largest in the world after India and China. And this statistic is a couple of months old, so Facebook is probably close to 400 million users today. Facebook is the, the fastest growing segment on Facebook is 55 to 60 year old female. Peer recommending products and, and that's what we're primarily concerned about in our relationship to social media. Every day on Facebook more than one and a half million pieces of content are shared daily. And those include links to websites, blog posts, photos, news stories, notes, and videos. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world obviously after Google. Uh, Google also owns YouTube. There's more than 100 million videos on YouTube. Every minute of the day, there are 20 hours of video on YouTube being uploaded. Twitter is a microblogging um, tool. It is used to share information in real time. Things that happen in Twitter are instant, so you're sending messages back and forth and you're instantly communicating with people. In terms of blogs, there's more than 200 million blogs. 34% of bloggers post opinions about products and brands. 25% of search results for the world's top 20 largest brands are linked to user-generated content. <clears throat> I'm talking about blogs. 73% of active online users have read a blog. I won't go all through these. 55% have left comments. Uh, and 39%, is 40% of all users have started their own blog. These statistics represent old world media. 18% uh, of TV ad campaigns 
receive a positive return on investment. 90% of people who can skip TV ads with their TiVo do it. The average person is exposed to 3,000 advertising messages a day. Only 14% of people trust advertisers. 78% of people trust the recommendations of other consumers, primarily their friends and people that they know and peers. This is where social media lives. The new communication is a dialogue. So why should we participate? Because people are talking about food and agriculture and what we do right now on the internet. So we need to be there to participate. As you saw from Dino's presentation, the biggest thing is conversation. Uh, it's not, you hear all the time that we need to persuade the consumer and educate the consumer. We need to create a conversation first. So with that, there's actually been some things that we've been uh, doing. Uh, through my activity on Twitter, I've had one local success. There's a uh, large group in Modesto called the Modesto Tweet Up that gets together uh, every couple months and they actually have a social event where you meet face to face and they've created a large uh, following in following that. Modesto has actually been uh, rated one of the top uh, digitally most connected uh, cities in the U.S., believe it or not. This slide comes from a uh, person in Modesto who's become a community activist, uh, and you can see he came out and he did actually brought his family out to my dairy, and we had connected through Twitter. He wanted his uh, children to understand what a dairy was like. I did not realize at the time that he was going to take the video of the, whole, of the whole thing. He took the video the whole time he was there and posted it on YouTube in three different sections. He came out of it was during an uh, online chat a few days later. Uh, we had some questions, and the question basically was, what can agriculture do to reach out to consumers? And these are in order. You can see the first one. Uh, open your farm to families outside of ag life. I'm here as a result of it. That's one person, but he has quite a few followers that he's uh, that are following him and seeing that post that he made. Uh, it was uh, in an ag chat session, and I'll explain that in a little bit. As far as I'm concerned, if I stopped using social media today, I've done my job and I've gotten at least one more person on board with ag who had no agricultural background whatsoever, grew up in San Jose and moved his family to Modesto because it was more affordable to live. Okay, so this is how they're using social media. They're using social media to get to their um, constituents. You can see they're putting a face on her. She is uh, the face of HSUS. This is the new Twitter background that we're seeing come from a lot of companies where they're actually trying to put a face on the people that are tweeting. Uh, I believe Best Buy is using this kind of background as are a few other major corporations that are tweeting. They're actually taking it right back to the person so you feel like you have a connection with the person and not the, not the corporation. To gal from Iowa, each day she posts what she did and why she did on her family ranch. Simply communicating the what, why, and how to the consumer. The second type of the blog is one that Troy Hadrick runs, and that's media response. Every morning, Troy sits down at the computer, he sees what are the headlines. What are the headlines against ag, anti-ag? Is it a humane issue? Is it an environmental issue? And then he posts a response to it. Once he posts that response, he sends it out on Twitter. Those of us in the ag community retweet it. It gets to all our fans. And we drive consumers to his blog. The third type of blog is more of what I do, which is issue discussion. I tend to use my blog to talk about specific issues prior to an ag chat, following an ag chat, or if I notice on Twitter in the pro food community that there are specific studies that are being cited or articles that are being cited that are using bad information or bad science, I then discuss it in length. What are the faults? Where are they wrong? What is the right answer? Facebook broken down very simply. You can have three types of Facebook accounts. Number one is personal. You lock your privacy down. You only let people in that you know. Me personally, I have a personal Facebook account. You can expand that out to a fan page, which we, uh, Ray has done with farm to you This is open to everyone. Invite those people in. But a fan page does not have your personal information. And third, it can be used for information sharing. Humane Society, Farm to You, all fan pages that are used. Uh, I Love Farmers, Dr. Vernon's uh, wonderful creation. It's getting information out to people, whether it's alumni, classmates, colleagues.